In this video, I would like to talk to you about hydraulic pump model numbers and how we use them to expose the internal workings and the characteristics of each pump. This topic, by necessity, can be very, very long and very complicated. So I'm going to try to break down some of the basics and some things you need to watch out for when attempting to understand a hydraulic pump's model number. As you can see here, the hydraulic model numbers can come in a lot of different numbers, a lot of different values, and a lot of different conditions. Sometimes they can be very clean, sometimes they can be extremely dirty and barely legible or readable, and sometimes now they're putting them stickers on. We'll see how those last come 20 years down the line. All right? So why is it important that we understand hydraulic pump model numbers? Well, they are the portion of the hydraulic pump that tell us everything about that pump, all right? And we need to be able to break down their codes. And there is almost an unlimited a number of options that we can get inside of different pumps. And there are a lot of manufacturers of hydraulic pumps. So to be able to break down their codes sufficiently and effectively is very, very important. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's a picture of the, the, the model number that's taken off the nameplate of the hydraulic pump. And I'm going to go ahead and write this down so we can use this as we begin to break this down. And I don't want to write it here. I want to write it off the side so I can break it down as we move by. Okay? So this is V10-1P7P. One, A or C. You see where the confusion is here? If you look at uh, where that is, it looks like there was either an A there and then they stamped a C on it or vice versa. So in that case, we'll talk about how we have to overcome that. And then this is uh, 20. All right, so let's start breaking this model number down. All right, so here, if I look at my model number, I have V10. Here in number one, I have V10, so I want to take this box, and that is going to point an arrow down to here. And I'm going to circle that 10, because that will be important, all right, when we start to break down the rest of the characteristics of this pump. So, oftentimes you will actually see in some manufacturers, they will have arrows coming off of these, pointing to where they go to make it a little easier. With Vickers, there's so many options out there that this is the most efficient way they can give you to display, to break down those uh, characteristics of the hydraulic pump. The next part, okay, is this two right here. And you can see that this is in parentheses. And when things are in parentheses, that often means that they're, they might be omitted or they're not common, all right? So if I look here, I'm gonna look for an F or a P in my model number that comes after the numbers that I've already used. In this case, I've used V10, and one is not my next one. So this is omitted, okay? This is not required, all right? So I go to my next step, three, which comes down to the mounting style. And this is almost always included. And you can see here it's a one. There are a lot, there are a lot of different mounting styles out there, as you can see here. And it's important for a technician to be familiar with these. All right, and we, so let's say I couldn't read this model number. I may have to go out to the pump, see what that looks like, understand what it is, look it up and find out what type of mounting bracket it is, and then figure out what that number should be. But in this case, I can read it. There's a one, this is a two flange, a two bolt flange, S-I-E, A size, okay? Then we have our inlet ports, all right? So we're, we got one done, all right? And that was three. So we're going to go over to our four mark. We're going to bring this down, and this is a P. All right? So here, if I notice in my four, I have a P here and a P here. This is why understanding that this is a model V10 is so important. This will tell you that my inlet port connection is one inch NPT thread. Okay? So I know if I order a replacement pump that this is the size thread I have to have available for my easiest swap out of this pump. Then I'm going to go to five, and I'm going to have to scroll here a little bit. Now, the next one, my next number is seven, and seven is an option again here in ten. 
All right, so this is 10 gallons per minute. And I want to take a second to explain this because this is confusing or it can be confusing. If a pump is giving you capacity, it's giving you gallons per minute. But they're making, they're telling you, hey, this is how many gallons per minute you will get as long as you are running it at a certain RPM at a given pressure. All right. Now the RPM is the really important thing here. They're saying at 1,200 RPM you will get seven gallons per minute, and that's great. Some pumps that where they don't know the RPMs of the motor, they don't give you capacity. They give you volume. They give you centimeters cubed or inches cubed. And then you have to calculate out the gallons per minute based off the RPMs of the motor. I have a video that I will link below that shows you exactly how to do that math. Okay? Now, now that we know it's 7 gallons per minute at 1200 RPM, we'll go to the outlet port connection. Alright? And this is number 6. So, and there's a P in that spot. There's a P here. And now, again, I have to focus. There's so much information they're attempting to give us. And this is V10, so it's a half-inch NPT thread type. So again, if I'm ordering a replacement pump for this, I have to know this information so I can more easily swap out my pump instead of going through it and redoing my lines or anything. The more I, the more I can dissect from this pump, the easier it is going to be for me to order a replacement pump. Okay? So this is a P. We're good here. The next part, okay, we will go down to number seven. For seven, there is a one here, all right? And that one indicates that this is a straight keyed shaft. Now look at all of the different shaft styles that can come with a hydraulic pump. Sometimes there's one, sometimes only manufacturers do the keyed or one of the other ones. But you can see here, there are a lot of different styles and we want to be familiar with these because this is how we tie the coupling to it. However, we're going to couple this to the prime mover, well, typically an electric motor in industry, we're going to have to know what this is so we can buy the right coupler to couple to the motor. Next is eight, okay? And this is where things get a little murky. Is it an A or is it a C? In this case, we would have to go to the pump to see where the position of my outlet is, okay? And this is going to be either on the opposite of the inlet port or in line with the inlet port. And this is easy. You just go out there and look, all right? Now, when I went out there and looked, the way that it's built, it's actually in line with the inlet, okay? So this is not an A, it's a C. So they had an A there and they realized they made a mistake or they changed it and they stamped a C onto it, which made it a little confusing. But again, the pump manufacturer takes the assumption that a person who's going to be working on a hydraulic pump has been trained and can figure these things out. So they can be a little bit, they can be vague with some of their information because they know that people who are going to be dealing with hydraulic pumps should be trained very well on this. All right. Then the next one is the flow rate through the orifice. This is number nine. Okay. You can notice here that my 20 is not an option. So I look at nine, and you can see this is parentheses. None of those, so this one is going to be omitted. And then I go and I look at 10, and I get a bunch of letters here, okay, for different pressure settings. Well, we know that there is not a pressure relief valve built into this pump. So this is omitted, all right? Then we look at 11, and this is for design. And it says, subject to change, installation dimensions remain the same for designs 20 through 29. And this and this model number in particular has to do with how they've changed the design over time. So when you read the manual, they say in later designs, it's this. In earlier, or in earlier designs, you have to watch out for this as you read through the model number. And this is a breakdown of how we would go through and kind of decode, if you will, this mo the model number of a hydraulic pump. And it's manufacturer specific. Okay? There's no standard for model numbers, although they all tend to use this type of code here to break these down. By no means does the V always mean vein and things like that. And what does the 10 stand for? They're not always going to give you gallons per minute. They're not always going to give you displacement. Experience and a basic understanding of hydraulic pumps is absolutely required to break down the characteristics of a pump when you decode a model number 
using its manual, okay? So, I hope this video helped. If it did, please hit the like and subscribe button. And for more information on fluid power, both hydraulic and pneumatic topics, please check out my book, Fluid Power Systems, published by American Technical Publishers. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.